This isn't intended to provide legal advice. I'm not a lawyer. It's not intended to provide medical guidance because I'm not a doctor. And uh, it's not intended to sponsor anybody, promote anybody, or do anything like that. It's just intended to give you information to help you in the event you were to be diagnosed with cancer. Uh, so some of the first steps. So consider getting a second opinion. Uh, we've seen the thymoma that Dr. Shukla talked about. Uh, it was actually biopsied, so if you kind of hear the, the story and know the story behind that, um, for anybody that's out there that's kind of followed it, it was biopsied and it sounds like uh, the biopsy came back as a negative. So it is possible for a biopsy to pick up cells that are actually non-cancerous. Uh, so it, anyway, long story short with that, it was, it was identified to be cancer at some point and it was removed. So get a second opinion. Um, for those of you in the fire department, um, those of you who are retired, contact the wellness captain, your benefits trustee, somebody within the organization who's going to have a little bit of a, a knowledge base when it comes to the presumptive law and the process and how to go about that. Everybody's going to be a little bit different. So, presumptive law, right? It's presumptive in nature. This is through workers' compensation. So the Industrial Commission of Arizona regulates workers' compensation. Uh, for those of you who are in City of Mesa, it's fantastic to be part of the City of Mesa simply because we are self-insured and we are self-administered when it comes to workers' compensation. So pretty much all comes out of the City of Mesa and we have our administrators that help us through this whole process. Diane Reisinger, Diane Armstrong, and all the safety services ladies over there. So for us, it starts with the Zoe report. Um, you're going to want to cite there's a revised statute in that, and of course you've contacted one of us, and so we kind of walk you through the process. And then the follow-up is to go to occupational health, and that's pretty much by and large across the state. You have to initiate a claim by going to occupational health. Um, some will have the paperwork that has to go or precede it or at least follow it. Our paperwork comes both before and after. Uh, we've got a good working relationship with safety services, and so as such, as long as we have it within a relatively short period of time from the, the visit to occupational health, we're good. Um, consult your doctor to identify what treatment will look like. Forecast how many hours your PTO, uh, hours of PTO you have. Consider filing for FMLA, so that's a 12-week process for the City of Mesa, just be advised. The, they reserve the right, many organizations are this way as well, to put you on FMLA with, whether you want to be or not. It protects you, protects the city, and it's just a way um, for supervisors in the room, if you have a, an employee that misses 72 hours straight uh, of time, basically, there's, you're supposed to notify. Um, uh, really, you can notify Felicia Aguirre or anybody over there with HR, but you're supposed to notify the city and you're supposed to also offer the employee if they, need, if they would like to go to FMLA. So if you're a supervisor, um, consider time trades. Right, Sign of Genius helps with that. We've used that before. Maybe, there we go. Uh, consider modified duty. File paperwork with PSPRS, the 100 Love, et cetera. So, big thing that we want to point here is resolution starts with you protecting yourself and your family. So, bank your hours. Don't have an earn and burn mentality, right? Because when we look at cancer, um, I think that Kim went home. Kim is here. Right? Kim did her due diligence and she had like a thousand hours, I want to say. 1,300 hours. 1,300 hours when she got her cancer. Okay? That is doing your due diligence. She was going to be able to cover herself whether she got approved to workers comp right off the bat or it was going to be a lengthy process. She was going to cover herself so that she was paid at 100% every single shift that she missed. Now, my younger guys in the front row, you don't have that afforded to you. You don't have the ability to start day one and have 1,300 hours, and we understand that. So what can you do? Well, first and foremost, do what any financial expert's going to advise, and they're gonna say build a, an emergency fund of three to six months. So just for the sake of $10,000 being that emergency plan. When we talk about emergency plan, we say three to six months of living expenses. So this isn't like my Netflix, this isn't that extra you know, insurance that I have on my iPhone that costs $1,000, right? This is living expenses to get you through if you had to cancel everything. Three to six months would get you through and you wouldn't have to worry about it. Because when you're going through cancer, and anybody who's gone through it will tell you, any doctor in this room will tell you, that you don't want that extra burden and stress that finance presents itself. 
$10,000, two-year plan, that's $417 a month. A lot of people will look at that. Three years, that's a little bit more palatable, $277 a month. You save that every check, sorry, every month, and you're going to get $10,000 after, after a three-year period. So a little bit more palatable, right? Consider supplemental life insurance and cancer insurances. So uh, retirees in this room, those getting ready to retire, you do have the ability to continue your PFPRS retiree benefit through the cancer uh, program that they have. So I just wanted to point that out. So any retirees or people getting ready to retire, you will still have that option to continue that. Uh, we're gonna talk about that in a sec. So bottom line is, is we've got three levels of protection. You've got workers' compensation, you've got your personal health insurance, and you've got your PSPRS cancer insurance. So let's say we, we don't get approved for workers' compensation, right? We still have two things, two other things working for us. But specific to the workers' compensation, the approximate causation, all that. So there's only four requirements that you need to be met in order to be presumptive. No evidence of cancer upon hire, and that has to come with what Dr. Smith does and others across the valley, and it's an NFPA 1582 compliant physical, okay? No evidence of cancer on hire. Assigned a hazard duty for five years, Technically, there's a new caveat in that policy. It's item G. If you go look at it, it says firefighter is full-time, so it has to be full-time firefighter for five years. Exposed to no carcinogen. This is from the IRC. The IRC is the International Agency for Research on Cancer. They are part of the World Health Organization, and they are the for foremost authority throughout the world on cancer. Uh, and it says that the carcinogen is reasonably related to cancer. So what does that mean is the carcinogen has to be related and that's what we're experiencing with a lot of fire departments across the state is legal experts on the other side that are trying to fight against approving you are saying show me the carcinogen that relates to this cancer. And that's found on the table through the IRC and that IAR, IARC is actually referenced in our presumptive law. So it's a good way. What we've done in Mesa and what we're starting to see across the valley is we've linked specifically the carcinogen that's related to the product of combustion. If wood burns, these are the chemicals, right? So that, that way you can associate the chemicals. And it's to your, basically it's your, your piece of accountability, it's, it's your best interest to fill out that smoke exposure every single time, all the time. And just a, a little blip in there, by the way, we did put in secondhand smoke. So as we brought up secondhand smoke as, as right lung cancer, if you are exposed to secondhand smoke over and over and over, I don't know what the likelihood you would be approved if it was a cancer that was specific to secondhand smoke, but at least we give you the opportunity to protect yourself and, and submit the claim. Uh, and then of course you receive a physical examination that is reasonably aligned with NFPA 1582, and that is post hire, and that is where the annual medic exams come in specific to Mesa and all the other cities around us. Houston Fire Department doesn't do this. They don't do any annual med exams. They've got 4,000 firefighters. So when you recognize that your city right, might have not got, given you that 2% raise or you didn't get that COLA, understand that we're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on you every single year right, as a whole to make sure that you guys are protected. This piece is a significant piece in the presumptive cancer law. By the way, the, the presumptive cancer law says plus or minus three months of that 12 month. So you have to get it within a 15 month window. So not presumptive, far more difficult to get it covered. Here's all the stuff that's associated with that. We won't talk about that, um, but it is difficult to get it covered. As you see the red, uh, in the red, the disease does not come from a hazard to which the worker would have been equally exposed to the outside of the uh, employment. Uh, that's an easy one for us to prove, but we've got five other things that we have to prove. This is uh, from the LeMaster study. Uh, there are three studies, we kind of talked about that. The Nordic study, the LeMaster study, the NIOSH study. These are the big three studies, and these are actually referenced in the presumptive cancer legislative notes. Most people don't even have access to the notes. We have access to the notes and we've submitted them to our city. Uh, we've given them to everybody. We've tried to share them with everybody. The bottom line is, is you can see from the first line, pinpointing the exact cause of cancer is extremely difficult, right? And it's because we're not just exposed to one agent. So what are the benefits of workers' compensation? So why would you care to get approved with workers' comp compensation? Well, some people in this room will already tell you, right, because they've been able to experience the benefit, whereas some of the other cancers uh, that we've had across the state and even within the department aren't presumptive, and so they lose these benefits. So the very first thing is, is your time off during treatment. It's covered. City of Mesa, we cover you. Workers' comp pays for 66 two-thirds percent. 
IIPs, which is called Industrial Insurance Plan, that covers you for another portion. If you're a sworn member, it covers you for 33 and a third, that makes you 100% whole. If you are not a sworn individual, it covers you up to 80%. Medical expenses for treatment are covered. Future treatment and screenings related to cancer are covered. Um, I was talking to Trevor Madrid, and it looks like his uh, PET scans afterward are going to be in the uh, tune of $4,000 each. He's supposed to be getting two to three a year, right? So, uh, or something to that degree. So you can see that those, those costs can add up pretty significantly. If you become disabled due to the cancer, you can be eligible for disability through the workers' comp. So that would also pay you for being disabled. So that is why you would want to. Now, again, if you're not approved, so what do I do? First and foremost, I'm not a lawyer, so you can seek legal counsel. EAP offers free legal advice. Most organizations have that. This for the city of Mesa, this is the number that you would call. You get some options, you get your first 30 minutes consultation for free, 25% off additional services, right? So you have things and mechanisms in place to start getting you underway. You still have health insurance, PSPRS, cancer insurance, and any other supplemental insurances that you have. So doing that due diligence for you and your family would be to getting short-term disability. You don't have the ability to get 1,300 hours when you start, so you'll have short-term disability, right? We'll talk about that right here. Um, I want you also to consider this though. With a high deductible plan, City of Mesa this year, which by the way, our open enrollment starts here in about a week, 4650 is an out-of-pocket max for an individual. All remaining network treatment is covered at 100%. Prescription drugs are out of pocket at 2,500. PSPRS provides $15,000 with a first occurrence benefit. Skin cancer will give you $500. Lifetime max benefit is 100,000 for this whole program that PSPRS has. Radiology and chemo benefit, $10,000 max benefit. So let's play this out. You have cancer and it's going to span over two years. And you're on a 50-50 plan, which is probably the least beneficial for you, let's be honest. You spend $4,650, and next year I believe it's $4,400. So you spend your $4,400 out of the day, day one because you need chemo. You now submit a claim. In addition to your $15,000, you're going to get $4,600 back or $4,400 if it's this uh, following year. Right? So it's your dollars out of pocket, and then guess what? You're covered at 100% as long as it's in that one. Right? So there are things that will still cover you, but how do you get the time off? And that's going to start with some of that supplemental insurance. Pharmacy benefit is not to exceed the actual out-of-pocket expenses. So if you spend $2,500 in out-of-pocket expenses, guess what you're going to get back? $2,500. You've met your max out-of-pocket, now all your medications are covered, as long as they are approved and they're not uh, a treatment medication. And then of course you have hospital benefits, $200 a day uh, if it's just regular hospital benefit, $500 a day if it's intensive care. 100 Club gives you some money, line of duty death, $15,000. Uh, $500 per month if it's a line of duty injury and a $500 one time if it's an on duty injury that's not classified as line of duty. I don't know how that works, but those, uh, those are still there. The PFFA and your local will likely provide additional financial assistance as well. And so here's some fine print. PSPRS, you got 24 months to make a claim. Benefits payments will begin for covered expenses incurred up to 90 days before the date. The first pathological, pathological diagnosis of cancer is made. That's straight from them. So in essence, you get a diagnosis of cancer and you had treatment and medication costs, et cetera, that preceded that for a 90 day period, they'll cover that. Last thing is, is presumptive cancer applies to those who are age 65 years of age or younger and who are within 15 years of retirement if you're retired, right? So those are fantastic benefits that are covered to us. Short-term disability, here's a little bit of information about it. The really big thing that I want to talk to you guys about, especially some of you younger guys as you're coming out, it's an opportunity for you to cover yourself seven days, 29 days, 44 days, that's your grace period, which means that you would have to find PTO time to cover yourself up into that interim that you meet the seven, 29, or 44 days, here in Mesa specifically, in order to start getting those benefits. The benefits pay out for six months. Okay, and they're going to pay out at 66 and two-thirds percent tax-free. They're based off your base salary prior to disability. You're not going to accrue sick or vacation time when you're on short-term disability either. You're not coming to work. As such, right, because here's a, here's a wonderful caveat. You need 65 hours on a 40-hour week, or you need 54 hours on a 56, and some of you might be looking at that and going, that doesn't make sense, and that's because the wonderful uh, MOU that we have that works in your guys' favor. So uh, you will not be accruing time in the PRS system either. 
So just understand that. It's, it's a short-term disability, you're out of work. So temporary disability, this is from PSPRS, tier tier one, two, and three, which everybody in this room would be if you are a sworn firefighter. Uh, monthly benefit is one twelfth of 50% of your annual compensation. So essentially, they're gonna take your 50% of what you're making annually, and they're gonna give that to you as a 50% mark. Now, you can be claiming both. Right, City of Mesa is not going to give you money when you're taking from PSPRS. But if you did not have PSPRS, uh, I'm sorry, if you did not have short-term disability, apologize, let me back up. If you did not have short-term disability, this would be kind of your last resort. Okay, you get a full year off with that, it's only for 12 months, and it's temporary in nature, foreseeable rehabilitation period that you may be able to return. And of course, the max of 12 months. So this would be your last resort. Your short-term disability would be a better option. That's it. So the big, the big thing I want to point out is, is uh, often we, we've gone around and, and we've heard people saying, what is the city of Mesa doing for us? I know other cities might feel that way when it comes to cancer. And the bottom line is, is there are things that we are doing. There are things that we continue to do. Uh, Dr. Smith is our IME for our presumptive cancers. Uh, so that helps streamline the process. It helps reduce and alleviate a lot of the stress that comes with an IME. Um, I won't say what I wanted to say there with that other IME that's been used across the valley. Uh, if you guys know about that person, you probably know what I was going to say. Uh, more importantly though for you is to get your short-term disability and have personal accountability. When you get hours, don't burn your hours. Right? Bank those hours up. Use them obviously if you need to use them. Don't come to work sick and throwing up because nobody wants that in their, you know, their fire station either. But don't just be... Uh, the earn and burn mentality. Try to try to get those hours saved up. Short-term disability is available for you. And then, of course, if you have time trades, if you have stand-ins, um, if you set yourself up for that. And you can also get long-term disability outside of, of the city's insurance. But long-term disability through PSPRS is called retirement, a medical. So that's pretty much all I have. Um, let's give another round of applause for Dr. Orton and all the doctors and Dr. Harris. And, so.